Hello and welcome back to Excelsior. Hope you're doing good and learning new things every day. In the same context, I have brought something for you today. Creating an index sheet for those Excel files which have too many sheets and it gets tedious just from going from one sheet to the other. Like in this file here, which is from our video about transferring data automatically to client sheets using the pivot table method. It has multiple sheets and to check the sheet you want to, you may have to scroll, find the sheet and then when you want to return to the first sheet, you have to go through the same steps. The easiest solution is to create an index, just like in a textbook, where you find where you want to go and then flip the pages to get to that desired page. Only in Excel, you don't have to flip pages, you just have to click. Makes it a lot easier, doesn't it? So I have three ways to show you today. Let's start with the first one, using the hyperlinks. It's pretty simple, using a hyperlink option in Excel, it's quick and painless. Let's create a new sheet here and name it index. Now go to the insert tab up here and then go to link. From there, select place in this document and you will see all the sheet names listed. Just click on the one you want. Let's start with the master sheet. So click on it and now on the top here, it says text to display, meaning what it will look like in your cell here. We don't want the A1 bit, so we change it to master sheet. Hit OK and done. Now, whenever you click on it, it'll take you to the master sheet. Let's create another one for pivot table sheet up here. So insert tab, link, select pivot, name it as pivot, hit OK and done. Let me quickly create links for all the sheets in fast forward mode and get back to you. All done. Now we can go to whatever sheet we want, but what about getting back to our index sheet? We don't want the same process of scrolling through all the sheets when we have just discovered such a simple trick. So let's find a cell that is available on all the sheets and create a link there to get back to our index sheet. Here. By the looks of it, O1 on all the sheets is available. So let's create our link to the index sheet here. Same process, highlight the cell, insert tab, link, place in this document, select the index sheet, and let's name it index. And we should copy this cause it's the same name we are going to use in other sheets as well. Hit OK and this sheet is done. Let's move to the next sheet, link, select the index sheet, paste the name here and hit OK. Let me do the remaining sheets in fast forward mode and done. Now we have an index on the first sheet and a sort of back button on all the sheets. It sure makes the navigation easier, but there are some limitations of this method. Every time a new sheet is added, it doesn't get saved automatically, but you will have to follow this procedure all over again. Same thing when a sheet is removed, you will have to delete the link for that sheet here. Also, if you change the name of the sheet, like let's rename the pivot sheet to pivot 2, and let's check. Now when we click on the link, it gives an error. And if we rename it back to pivot, it works fine. So in essence, if you have a sort of file where no more changes are expected in terms of sheets, this is an easy method and will help you immensely. Let's say you chase perfection. So you're not happy with the first method and you want something that incorporates changes to the sheets name and adding and removing sheets as well. Well, that's what the second method does. A fair warning though, some of you might find it a bit technical because it involves nesting of multiple formulas. But I assure you, all of these formulas are pretty easy. You might have already used them one time or the other and I'll make it super easy for you anyways. And as a bonus for sticking around, you'll be able to use the third method, which is super duper easy. Trust me on this. So, for our second method, we are going to use the get.workbook function. Let me show you its syntax. This is a function that is not available normally in a cell. It is an old Excel 4.0 macro function. And when I say old, I really mean old, like it was released back in 1992. Before VBA was introduced in Excel, which was in Excel 5, which was itself released back in 1993. Excel had the ability for macros, though they were there since Excel 2, but they are commonly called as Excel 4 macros. Enough of the history lesson, let's get back to the get.workbook function. 
If you recall the aggregate function video, we showed how aggregate function had many functions in itself. It's a similar situation with get.workbook. It has a total of 38 options to choose from. It has options to show the number of worksheets in a file, names of the selected sheets, if the workbook structure is protected or not, the name of the active sheet and most importantly, the names of all the sheets in the workbook, which made this video possible. This function is not available in a cell. You have to define it in a name. What does that mean? It means you can't just use this function in any cell. Let me show you. If you recall, in my video about the automatic data transfer from one sheet to another using advanced filters, we used the name manager to name a range. We are going to do something similar in this Excel file, which is a copy of the same file where we started with the first method, hyperlinks. So let's start by creating a sheet in the beginning and name it index. Now let's go to the formula tab and click on name manager here. My file has all these names already because I'm using the file from an old video. Yours might not have anything in here. Click on new and under name, we can say index. Scope will be workbook from this drop down. It refers to delete if there is anything there already. And here is where we will mention our get.workbook function. So let's do that now. Type is equal to get.workbook. Open brackets. And now we have to choose the option from 1 to 38. We will choose option 1, which is to display the name of all the sheets in the workbook and then close the brackets. Close this and get out of the name manager. You won't see any changes here. We just kind of defined a formula and now we are going to activate it. Let's get to this cell here and is equal to and then type the name we gave in the name manager index. Excel will show you options and incidentally Excel also has a function named index. So it's showing that here as well. But what we are interested in is this one with little squares. Select that, press tab and here we have all the names of the sheets. Please note, I'm using Microsoft 365 and that is why it looks like a spilled formula result. If you are using another version, it will look like a normal result to you. Now let's quickly check our result. Let's expand the cell so we can have a close look. If you analyze the names, you will realize that it starts with the name of the file in square brackets, index part 2, and then the file name and there is no space between the closing square bracket and file name. At this point, there are a couple of things we need to do in order to get this from looking like this. First, we don't want our index to look like this going horizontally. Because we may have many sheets and it would be a real pain if we have to scroll to click on the sheet name to go to that sheet. It will be useless to do all this if we still have to scroll to get our result. So, it should go vertically. That's an easy fix. Use transpose. So, we write our formula here in C5. Transpose, press tab and select all the sheets from here. Press enter and done. And now all the sheets are in vertical format. Next, we don't want the file name in here. We just want the name of the sheet. Again, that's an easy fix. We can use substitute. Let's write our formula here in E5. Substitute, select C5 as our text. In old text, Open quotes and type the full file name with square brackets. So, square brackets, index part 2 dot xlsx, square brackets closed. Close brackets. And now, for new text, we don't want anything. So, just use double quotes twice. Close brackets, press enter. And here we have just the sheet name. Copy and paste this to the end and it's done. But there is a problem with this approach. This works fine in this case, but what if the file name is different? Our formula won't work then. Ideal situation would be we write a formula that could tackle this easy. Well, there is a way, but it needs two formulas. Find and replace. Not the control F find and replace, but two separate functions find and replace. Here is the syntax of both of them on the screen. Take a moment to understand our objective. We want to write something that could track 
where our closing square bracket is and delete everything before it. Because we know how Excel presents sheet names with our get.workbook formula, it's always file name in square brackets and immediately our sheet name follows without any spaces. So we will use the find function to find where our closing bracket is. Let's try that here in E5. Delete our substitute results. We won't be needing those and write find. Then for find text, we use our square bracket in double quotes. And for within text, we select this cell C5, press enter and done. Copy and paste it down and we see 19 as our result in all the cells. Because our file name is same in all the cells and our closing square bracket is at the 19th position. So now we need a formula that we could use together with this find function so it works for any file name we give. Enter the replace function. Let's edit our find formula and use the replace function in here itself. So we start a formula with replace. Our old text is C5, so we select that. Start number is 1, because we want to start from the beginning. And then we use this find function for number of characters. And for new text, we use double quotes twice, because we don't want anything as our new text. Close brackets, and here we have the sheet name from the whole thing. You would think that is all, but there is one more modification we should do in order to achieve our goal. All that is left is to get this updated whenever a new sheet is added or deleted. Because as of now, if we add a new sheet here, like this, it doesn't show up. Not even when we click on calculate now for the simple reason that we haven't done anything yet to address this issue. For that, we are going to use the now function. What this does is, if we use it here in D14, it gives us the current date and time. And if we go to the formulas tab and click on calculate now, it will refresh itself. You can also use F9 as the shortcut key to calculate the formula. You must be thinking, why would we want the date and time in this situation? You are right, we don't. We just want this function's ability to update, minus the date and time thing. And to achieve this, we are going to use it with the T function. Let me show you. If we use our t function here in E14 and select D14 as our value, it gives us a blank cell. What it does is, if we have text in the value cell, it will show the text. Otherwise, it will keep it blank. So that's how we use the now function here. But this is getting too cluttered. We don't want the first sheet of our file to look like this. So let me delete the whole thing first and we will move all these formulas to a named range where we place the get.workbook function. So go to the formula tab and click on name manager. Choose our name, index and click on edit. Maximize it so we can see the full formula. We start with transpose. Just to let you know, you won't be able to use the tab key to bring up the formula syntax. So we have to be very careful in order to use the correct syntax. For your convenience, you will see the syntax on the screen. So transpose needs an array and for that we will open brackets and start with our replace formula. Open brackets and for old text we use get.workbook1. Start number is 1 and for number of characters we use our find formula. Open brackets, find text is our closing square bracket in quotes. Within text is again our get.workbook1 function. Close brackets for find. Put a comma and now we are at the last argument of our replace function, new text. So we enter double quotes twice. Now we type two closing brackets, one for the replace formula and one for the transpose formula. That does the job for getting the names in the format we want. Now to keep them updated, ampersand T open brackets now open and close brackets for now function and close brackets for the t function and that finally does it click on ok click on close and here we have all the names as we want them now let's test them let's add a sheet here right click on master sheet insert worksheet ok and we have a new sheet here let's check on our index sheet and boom Let's rename this new sheet to something else. Double click on the sheet you just created 
rename it to something and here it is. No need to press F9. What happens if you delete it from here? Right click and delete and it's gone. So we created something that can list all the names of the sheets in our workbook but it's still not an index. We have to link them to these sheet as well. To do that, we can use the linking trick we did in our first method but the issue with that is you will have to create a new link every time you add a new sheet. Like when we added a sheet here, the name comes up here with no issues. But that name will simply be a string, not a link. So we need a hyperlink formula in order to be able to incorporate this. If you are familiar with hyperlink formula, you know it's pretty easy. You just show the location and a friendly name and it's done. But in our case, our link will be updating as and when we add or remove sheets. So we can't have a fixed link here, which links us to a certain sheet. We want to have a formula that keeps changing the names of the sheets as it sees in this cell here. So let's write something like that. Hyperlink within quotes, hash symbol for spill ranges like this, single quote and double quotes again, ampersand, then reference this cell, ampersand, open quotes, single quotes, exclamation symbol, and then we need to mention the cell we want to go to. Let's say A1, the very first cell in every sheet, comma. Now we have to mention the friendly text, meaning what do you want to display here? Let's just say click here in double quotes, close brackets and done. Now let's just drag the whole thing down and test it. Let's click on any sheet. This works fine. Let's check another. Great. So everything is working as it should, but we still have to create a link on all the sheets to get back to the index sheet. Let's quickly check all the sheets and it looks like we have cell N1 available on all the sheets. So let's create our link here. Let's select the first sheet, hold shift and select the last sheet. Now click on cell N1 on any sheet and write our hyperlink formula. Hyperlink, open brackets, open double quotes, hash symbol and a sheet name, which is index. Exclamation, we want to go to cell A1, so A1, close quotes, comma, and now for friendly name, let's say index sheet in double quotes and done. Now we have a link to go back to our index sheet. That finally does it. Now we have all the sheet names, they are updated automatically. We have the links to other sheets set up and links to get back to our index sheet. Just don't forget to save this file as Excel macro enabled workbook or you will be looking at a blank index sheet. Before we move to our third method, the most easy which requires no formula whatsoever, let me show you something that I encountered after I opened this file again. Before recording this video or any other video, I normally recheck everything. And when I opened this file, I was greeted with this. It says block. I thought you might come across this error yourself, so I should share it and the solution for it too. If you click on this exclamation here, it says functions with XLM macros are disabled. That's a security feature which is enabled by default. But it's easy to fix. Let's click on File, Options, Trust Center, Trust Center Settings, and put a check mark here. Enable Excel 4.0 macros when VBA macros are enabled. Hit OK here and here, save the file and close it. Open it again and everything works fine. Now the third method, the easiest of them all, requires no formula, no VBA, no hyperlinking, just requires two clicks of your mouse. I promise. So here we have our original file. Go to view, that's one click and click on navigation. That's the second and final click. And look what we have here. A full index which updates as and when we add a sheet. And when we remove a sheet. So it does everything that we achieved by writing all those complex formulas in just two clicks. Makes you wonder if you are utilizing your time better, doesn't it? It did to me. But then I realized something important. This navigation option, though available to all Excel users, is not widely used. And most important of all, it's local. Meaning, 
It's available at a user level and if they don't know about this feature, which is most of them, that gets tedious for them. But when you use the second method and send the file to someone, they are already with an index sheet. Not only they will have an easy time going through the sheets, you will get some Excel wizardry points too. And I think that's worth all that trouble, don't you? With this thought-provoking comment, we come to the end of this video. I hope you have learned something new and interesting today. I'll be back with something else in my next video. Until then, like, share and subscribe to my channel. And if you have any queries, ideas or feedback, share them in the comments. I go through all of them and try to respond to each one of them as soon as possible. So until next time, happy spreadsheeting.